Dr. Gordon Zink presented an efficient and effective means of approaching a patient from the respiratory circulatory model with the goal of maximizing venous, lymphatic, and arterial flow to improve health. Some of the key somatic dysfunctions in his treatment approach were found at the transition zones of the body as these are not only areas of increased stress, but they're also closely associated with transverse diaphragms. We will discuss the important structures and functions of the thoracolumbar junction or T12L1 region of the spine. At the thoracolumbar junction, the kyphotic curve of the thoracic spine is transitioning to the lordotic curve of the lumbar spine. This transition zone is therefore a crossover or inflection point of the spine and is subject to increased stresses, injury, and somatic dysfunctions. The horizontal diaphragm associated with the thoracolumbar region of the spine is the thoracoabdominal diaphragm. The thoracoabdominal diaphragm has widespread attachments throughout the region, including to the lower six ribs, T12, L1 to L2 or 3, the xiphoid process of the sternum, and myofascial connections with the quadrius lumborum and psoas. The thoracoabdominal diaphragm is pump-like with regards to drawing in of oxygenated air into the lungs. The negative intrathoracic pressure created during inhalation greatly assists in venous and lymphatic return to central circulation. Viscerosomatic relationships from the lower intestine and colon and other abdominal pelvic organs exist with the sympathetic centers in the thoracolumbar region. These fascial or articular somatic dysfunctions can lead to restriction and or pain. Key myofascial relationships exist from the mediastinum through the diaphragm and its crews and down into the pelvis and lower extremity through the quadrius lumborum and the psoas. Dr. Zink presented an efficient means of evaluating gross fascial pattern movements associated with the transition zones helpful in identifying both fascial and or articular restrictions. With the diagnosis and treatment of somatic dysfunction of the thoracolumbar region, it's necessary to consider the entire thoracoabdominal cylinder. Gross fascial motion of the thoracic cage on the lumbar spine can be assessed in a supine patient with the thoracolumbar shift of the lower thorax. It's also helpful to assess lumbar side bending with static position evaluation of which iliac crest is more superior. Thoracolumbar somatic dysfunction treatment addresses both the thoracolumbar shift and the superior iliac crest. The patient is positioned in a lateral recumbent position on the side opposite the thoracolumbar shift. Go ahead and turn on your side facing me. To isolate motion, the trunk is rotated toward the ceiling until motion is first appreciated at the T12 vertebra. Monitoring hands can be switched. The trunk is then stabilized by having the patient wrap their arms around the physician's arm. The leg adjacent to the table is extended and the contralateral leg, uh, not positioned on the table, is flexed to the hip, allowing the leg to drop off the table until motion is first appreciated at T12. While stabilizing the upper body with the one arm, the other arm is on the lateral pelvis region uh, with the lumb lumbar spine and pelvis rotated forward or toward the physician and either slightly superior or inferior to directly address the positional diagnosis of the iliac crest. As the patient exhales, go ahead and take a breath in, and breathe out. The lumbar spine is further rotated forward toward the table to fully engage the restrictive barrier and an HVLA thrust is performed only with the arm on the pelvis directing the vector towards the physician and further rotating the pelvis forward and slightly superior if the iliac crest was inferior or inferior if the iliac crest was superior. While correction is often assumed when the joint articulation or pop is appreciated, a direct myofascial improvement can also be achieved with or without an articulation. Have the patient return to laying supine and we can reassess for the correction by reassessing our landmarks, checking the iliac crest height and the thoracolumbar shift. The complex nature of the structure and function of the thoracolumbar junction has lent itself to many different diagnostic and treatment approaches. This can be evidenced by looking at the multitude of approaches for treatment of the thoracoabdominal diaphragm. The technique presented in the video is effective for the treatment of thoracolumbar junction somatic dysfunction. Treating this region may help reduce postural compensatory mechanisms, balance sympathetic nervous system through viscerosomatic reflexes, improve gait, and decrease pain. Treating somatic dysfunction of the thoracolumbar junction is effective in improving venous and lymphatic return. However, it is best integrated as part of a whole body respiratory circulatory model approach. The benefits can be especially valuable during pregnancy, not only for common pregnancy related back pain, but also for the restriction of maximal respiration. The respiratory circulatory approach can be particularly helpful for reducing the effects of congestion related conditions seen in pregnancy. For example, carpal tunnel syndrome, varicosities, hemorrhoids, and pedal edema. 
by also focusing on the remaining transverse diaphragms in addition to treatments of other key somatic dysfunctions which may inhibit venous, lymphatic, and arterial flow, Dr. Zink's common compensatory pattern approach is truly a model which promotes health.